more. But those are absolute, genuine, absolute, genuine moaning complaints. Right, so I said one day I would get round to doing this vlog. I'm not too sure what I'm going to title it. Maybe they love to moan. <laughs> um, you could not make up some of the shit um, that we see, read and get sent in um, about people who love to moan and give bad reviews. Uh, this year I have mentioned many times um, some reviews as they've come in and had a right chuckle uh, with them. Fortunately, I work for a very, very understanding company and my boss um, is wonderful and can see straight through some of these, um, but some of them absolutely beggar belief. So there are some haters out there. Uh, every YouTuber gets them and we, yeah, we're all familiar with them. It's off, off with our head. Some, and some people just hate other YouTubers. Um, and we often get false reviews done in. I've even, I even got one, I even got one, um, put in a really bad review using a photograph that I took one of my photos because they are that thick and stupid uh, on it. Right, so let's let's get in to some, to some, um, to some, <laughs> these are all genuine as well. These, I'm not making any of this shit up. Right, I have a day off. All being well, I get two days off. Some people seem to think that Neil Taylor, the campsite warden, is on duty seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and all he does is walk around vlogging and talking to people. No, 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 no. If I get my two days off, fingers crossed you won't see me because most of the time I'm off the site where possible, exploring the area where I live and work, and I bring you vlogs about things that I do. So if you see me, maybe on a Wednesday or a Thursday, talking to other YouTubers, and not being on, I'm not doing any work because I've been, I've been really, really naughty. I've, I've, I've been really naughty. I'm not been doing any work. It's probably on my day off. Okay, <laughs> clear that one out of the way, shall we? And if I do want to talk to other YouTubers, I will do. Um, the wind direction. Ah, this, this is unbelievable. So down at the bottom end of the site, we have got um, some I call traditional tent, tent pitches, four of them, and there's a hedge at the back of it. Sometimes the wind blows over the farm and the hedging sort of protects the touring site at the back where the motorhomes and caravans go. But sometimes the wind blows the other way and the hedging protects the people in the tents. I can't control which way the wind blows. And we've actually had somebody, a camper, complain that the hedge should be the other way around. It wouldn't matter. I can't control which way the wind blows. You can get an easterly one day, a northerly another day, a westerly, you can get the wind blows in different directions. I can't control that and neither can any campsite. This one here, this is, this is genuine. This is genuine coming up. There was nothing to do. <laughs> there was nothing to do. Okay, nothing. you're absolutely right. If you're coming for a holiday, what to a rural location do a little bit of research on where you um where you're going on holiday to maybe maybe go and have a look at our in our information room we've got lots of leaflets on things to do in the area so no we haven't got a clubhouse or an arcade or a bar or anything but there is so much to do in the area please do a bit of research if you go to a campsite or a holiday park about why you're actually going going there so why, why, why on earth would somebody come and visit a campsite and go, there was nothing to do. <laughs> Boing. Oh God, right. We are in a rural location. We are in the middle of nowhere. We're in a place called Mumbai in rural Lincolnshire. And I can't do anything about the phone signal. I'm sorry. I can't, you know, the phone signal is a bit rubbish. And for some reason, I don't know whether it's the, the way when the tides are high, the tides low, or the tides come in and go, the phone signal drifts. 
I can't do anything about the phone signal. That's not the campsite's problem. Same with the Wi-Fi. We provide free. You're not even paying for it. You know, you don't pay one extra penny for the Wi-Fi here. Not, not a penny, not a half crown. Those at a certain age will remember. I ever happened to a 10 bob note? Anyway, um, so we provide a free Wi-Fi service. And obviously nowadays, a lot of people connect to that Wi-Fi um, service and they start streaming. I don't you know, your Netflix, your YouTube and all the rest of it. The Wi-Fi we've got has only got X amount of connections that it can take. The way to describe Wi-Fi with people, if you imagine a drain pipe, there is only so much water will go down that drain pipe before it overflows, it can't take any more. So we provide a free, free Wi-Fi service. So don't moan if you can't get it or it's a bit slow because you're not paying for it. Why don't you tether it onto your phone? Oh, you can't tether it onto your phone because the phone signal's a bit rubbish. Ah, you're in a rural location. Oh my God, spiders. <laughs> well, imagine somebody could play this lots of spiders. We've got lots of spiders. We're in a rural location. I'm forever cleaning spider webs and dealing with spiders. I can't control spiders. I can stamp on one one day, stamp on it and kill it. And then its mate will come out to try and find it. I can't do anything about spiders. Sorry, sorry, spiders, can't do. Pigeon muck. Yes, we get complaints about pigeons and pigeons muck. How on earth am I meant to control the pigeons? We've not actually had a written complaint about pigeons on caravan roofs or awnings as such, but we have had about pigeon muck uh, in the cottage, primarily. We've got a balcony on there and the pigeons sit on the um, railings and poo, because that's what pigeons do. I can't control where pigeons have a poo. I can't control it. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. I'll go and have a word with a boss pigeon. That's what I'll do, I'll, I'll go to the boss pigeon. Now, look, listen, boss pigeon, can you tell your friends, keep away from the nurseries, you must not come round here. Um, Seriously, these are, these are not made up. Uh, recently, so we're coming to the end of the season now, we're, I'm recording this obviously, we're into October. The shop we've got is the only shop for miles around. The village hasn't even got a shop. The pub once tried to have a little shop and couldn't make it work. It is stocked with essential items. And so this year we've had Mark's been running it. Next year, all being well, we'll have somebody else running it. But, you know, be grateful that we've got something. It's better than nothing. We're sorry if we run out of stock. The people that moan about <laughs> things like this, do you go to Tesco's at 10 o'clock at night and there's no bread and go, oh, they run out of bread? Because it's the same. And especially this time of year now, with perishable goods, the, the, the whole stock system has had to be run down. You can't make it up. Right, so another one. And we've had a couple we've had a couple of these. Neil didn't even speak to me apart from when we arrived and showed us onto our pitch. Neil didn't even speak to me. I think it's amazing. If you don't have to communicate with the warden and you're not and the, and you, the warden doesn't speak to you or you don't speak to the warden, it must be because things are going right things are going good so why why on earth why 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 would have we wanted to come to people and speak to people so we've got with touring and seasonals and all that we've got over 50 pitches here and sometimes we're full we're, we're absolutely so just imagine 50 i spent one minute one one minute with each knocking on each door hello i'm neil the campsite warden just come to say hello to you that would take me an hour I, you can't it doesn't work like that you've got no idea I think what it is, is when you see me vlogging, you, obviously you will see me chatting to people from time to time. And invariably, that is definitely not a Friday or a Saturday. Don't don't try and talk to me on a Friday and Saturday, I'm too busy. But quite often on a Sunday afternoon or a Monday or a Tuesday when we've got calm, things are calm. Yeah, I'll go and try and talk to people. But I every single arrival, you personally get a welcome from me. You're showing them everything what's on. I walk you, physically walk every single arrival to your pitch and take you to your pitch. How many wardens do that? Neil doesn't doesn't even speak to me, God. Is it, oh, um, evasive. Neil seems to be a bit evasive. I'm not evasive. 
If I'm sat on a mower or you see me running around or I've got carrying bags of rubbish or jumping in a bin or I'm sat on the computer, I'm not being evasive, I'm doing my work. I don't know, I think some people think a campsite warden, they're all of a campsite warden, is to sit around and go, oh, oh, oh let's, let, let's, let's have a chat for an hour. No, there's a, there's a campsite to look after, there's a holiday park to look after, there's the maintenance, there's everything to do with it, from litter picking to sweeping rabbit droppings off pitches, to cutting grass, to trimming hedges, to cleaning toilets. Ah, oh, no! <laughs> Ah, oh, yeah. This 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 was another one. This was a this this is obviously a hater. Maybe somebody that I didn't speak to. And we, uh, this is an actual complaint. YouTubers that visit the nurseries, especially for a big YouTube channel, you get all the best pitches near the toilet. Neil gives preferential treatment. You get the best pitches. No, they don't. Stupid person. Who said that? Yeah, I think you're a bit thick, and I know that's been a bit rude, but I do think you're a bit thick. Our booking system pre-allocates pitches and they are done in a rotation system. So if a YouTube channel comes, one day they may be on pitch number one, right by the toilets. Another day they may be on pitch number 10, the far end of the site. No, we don't give preferential treatment. What you can do if you're clever and if you've got a bit of a brain, duh, duh, you can go, actually, I like pitch number 15. That's a really good pitch that. I'll phone, the, I'll phone Web Holiday Parks and make um, a telephone book in and see whether pitch number 15 is free. That's what clever people do, people with a bit of brain. If you go on the pre-allocated automated system, it doesn't go YouTube channel, give them pitch number one. Ah, oh, God, it's truth. Flies, flies, flies. Again, we're in a very, very, very rural location. And when harvesting is done, um, especially like earlier on the year when the rape gets done, we get hit by thunderflies, thousands and thousands and thousands of thunderflies. And then there's muck spreading takes place and there's plowing of the fields take place. And flies emerge out of the ground. We've got dikes all running round us. There is actually a village in Lincolnshire, not far from here, in the news right now, that's got a midgy mosquito problem. <laughs> Can you imagine if we had midges on mosquitoes here? And be, oh, oh, we can't control the blue bottles, the flies, the thunder flies. We can't control them. <laughs> uh, what was the other one recently? Harvest in August. Sorry, yeah, yeah. The, and this is this is absolutely true on a review. We would suggest not to visit the nurseries um, when harvesting is taking place because the farmers work late into the night. The farmers work late. It's called harvesting. It's gone on for centuries, longer. You have to get the harvest in. You've got a short window when the weather is good and the nights are long. And yeah, you will get the combine harvesters in the fields, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the morning, getting the harvest in. That's called farming. And when you come camping, caravanning, motorhoming, next to a farm, you are going to get farm activity. Can't do anything about that. I could have a word with a farmer and go, oh, hang on, Joe Smith's staying here in his tent this weekend. Can you not do any harvesting for a week for him? <laughs> uh, farm track. We've got a farm track runs down um, at the back of the site, to the side of the site, and we've got tractors and farm machinery go up and down the farm track. We can't control what goes on. We, we can't stop the farmer using a farm track. That's rural life and what 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 goes what actually goes on. And also, when you come to the nurseries, now some of you know this and some don't. You will come through what appears to be a farmyard. You will come through. A, it, it's potholes when it rains there's puddles you come through what looks like a farm track through a farm yard that is not a farm track and it's not a farm yard believe it or believe it not that is highways and from when you come onto the site if you look carefully you can do the maximum speed limit there's an actual sign and as you come off the end of the uh, track onto the main lane you go to a 30 mile an hour zone it's highways if you've got a complaint about it, we can't do anything about that. Why didn't you load up the app, fix my, fix my street on your phone and report the potholes to the council? 
I can't do anything about it. It's not our fault. I have reported numerous times to East Lindsay Council that that track needs to be looked at. Why don't you do the same? Ah, dear, dear. Oh, got another one, got another one. So this can stem from when um, Web Holly Parts took the site over uh, was it two years ago now, 18 months ago, when they didn't used to allow tents. Some caravanners and motorhomers, mainly caravanners, hate people in tents. They hate the camping community because they're, oh, they're in a tent. Oh, we're far better than them. Look at us, we're in our, we're in our twin axle caravan or whatever, whatever. And we've actually got somebody who's claiming that all the caravans and tents are all crammed together. All the tents are crammed together. No, they're not. Uh -uh. Wrong, 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 wrong. If you stayed here at the nurseries, all our pitches are huge and generous in size. Nobody is cramped together. Absolutely fictitious BS coming out of some people's mouths. Another complaint. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying these. I hope you're enjoying these. If if you are enjoying these, because they are too, and especially if you're a fellow warden um, or you deal with a business where you get uh, bad reviews or whatever, do comment below because I'd love to hear what what your experience is. Anyway, right, bad smells. <laughs> there are bad smells, probably coming from the farm. This is truth, and I think that's word for word. There is a bad smell probably coming. You're right, you're absolutely right. Now you might say it's a bad smell, but some people say it's a good smell, it's a fresh country air smell. When muck spreading takes place, <laughs> which happens, it's the smell of the manure, it's the smell, of, it's the fresh country air, it's country life, it's animal smells, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> Um, God's truth, yeah, unbelievable. And we also have somebody complaining about our water treatment plant with our water that they can't drink. <laughs> they actually put in a request for information all about our water treatment plant um, and our water processing plant. We don't have one. No, Anglican Water, the Water Authority, the water comes down a pipe we don't have one i've got no idea why why what do you think we've got a well come a well into the ground if we had a well into the ground here we'd be pulling flipping salt water out unbelievable um another one sorry and this one to be fair i can get this complaint but people rather than write in and complain should ask why our rubbish bins our biffer bins all waste goes into one bin. Now, even when I came, I didn't realize this. So I was trying to recycle, you know, your, your, your plastics and your metals and your cardboards. All waste goes into one bin and the recycling is done at the Biffa plant. Okay. It's nothing to do with us. So if you see me putting something into the bin that's sort of marked recycling, I'm not contaminating it. I really am not contaminating it. Speak to Biffa if you don't believe me. It's done at the recycling plant. Can't do anything about that one. And another one. This is a hater. So, so we 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 love the YouTube haters. We absolutely we love you. <laughs> and if you're watching this, if you're watching this, and I know some of you do because you're a bit disturbed. You're a bit um, well, you know. The, the most the most amazing thing with YouTube haters, they watch the YouTube videos to get wound up and to hate them. I don't know what just what serious mental issues have you got don't watch if you don't like so Neil spends all his time making YouTube videos <laughs> I try and put out approximately a 20 minute video a, a, a content a 20 minute video every single day 365 days a year, including when I'm not working here. I film for a maximum of approximately 20 minutes. Sometimes it, it, it is a bit longer if, if it's quiet. 
And all the editing that I do, the reason why these videos you get are always a day or two behind, I quickly the vlog during the day as I'm walking about doing my work. You see the vlogs that I do. You see what I actually do. And they're literally a two minute vlog here, a two minute vlog there, two minute I'll stop me mower and oh it's a nice day today or I'm walking Russia. I don't spend all my day vlogging. If I spent all my day vlogging, you'd have a flipping eight hour vlog every day. All my editing is done in the evenings in my own time and the rendering and the uploading and getting it all onto YouTube. That's the reason these videos are always a day or two behind. I'll create a bit of content during the day and then after work, that's when I do my content creation. So I don't spend all day vlogging on YouTube. Some days I don't even do anything at all. I dry up, I physically dry up. Right, that's been enough of me waffling on and on and on and on and on a little bit more. But those are absolute genuine, absolute genuine moaning complaints, mentally ill people um, of what what they've, they've said about us. I am going to do another vlog very soon on all the great, amazing, fantastic things that people say about staying here at the nurseries. I will do a vlog the other way around because there are thankfully a significantly amount of more positive than the it's probably not even one percent of the negatives <laughs> hope you enjoyed that i really do hope you enjoyed that if you did do smash the like button that'd be amazing if you're not already done so you can subscribe down there if you can see the subscribe button um and please do in the comments if you're able to comment please do share any of the complaints or bad reviews that you've had whether it be as a campsite warden as a coffee bar owner as a publican as a somebody says people on boat rides if you own a business um yeah do share some of them because i would love to read them and i'd love to laugh out loud with you take care everybody Keep watching, look out for another vlog coming from the campsite warden, Neil Taylor, from Mumbai in Lincolnshire, coming to a screen near you very soon.